Section 23 of Myths Every Child Should Know. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jackie Horn. Myths Every Child Should Know. Edited by Hamilton Wright Maybe. Section 23. Chapter 10. Part 8. What Was the End of the Heroes? And now I wish that I could end my story pleasantly, but it is no fault of mine that I cannot. The old songs end it sadly, and I believe that they are right and wise. For though the heroes were purified at Malia, yet sacrifices cannot make bad hearts good, and Jason had taken a wicked wife, and he had to bear his burden to the last. And first she laid a cunning plot to punish that poor old Peleus, instead of letting him die in peace. For she told his daughters, I can make old things young again. I will show you how easy it is to do. So she took an old ram and killed him, and put him in a cauldron with magic herbs, and whispered her spells over him, and he leapt out again, a young lamb. So that Medea's cauldron is a proverb still, by which we mean times of war and change, when the world has become old and feeble, and grows young again through bitter pains. Then she said to Peleus' daughters, do to your father as I did to this ram, and he will grow young and strong again. But she only told them half the spell, so they failed, while Medea mocked them, and poor old Peleus died, and his daughters came to misery. But the songs say she cured Aeson, Jason's father, and he became young and strong again. But Jason could not love her after all her cruel deeds, so he was ungrateful to her and wronged her, and she revenged himself on him and a terrible revenge she took, too terrible to speak of here. But you will hear of it yourselves when you grow up, for it has been sung in noble poetry and music, and whether it be true or not, it stands forever as a warning to us not to seek for help from evil persons, or to gain good ends by evil means. For if we use an adder even against our enemies, it will turn again and sting us. But of all the other heroes, there is many a brave tale left, which I have no space to tell you, so you must read them for yourselves. Of the hunting of the boar in Calydon, which Meleager killed, and of Heracles's twelve famous labors, and of the seven who fought at Thebes, and of the noble love of Castor and Polydeuces, the twin Dioscoroi, how when one died, the other would not live without him. So they shared their immortality between them, and Zeus changed them into the two twin stars, which never rise both at once. And what became of Chiron, the good immortal beast? That, too, is a sad story, for the heroes never saw him more. He was wounded by a poisoned arrow at Follock among the hills, when Heracles opened the fatal wine jar, which Chiron had warned him not to touch. And the centaurs smelt the wine and flocked to it, and fought for it with Heracles, but he killed them all with his poisoned arrows, and Chiron was left alone. Then Chiron took up one of the arrows and dropped it by chance upon his foot, and the poison ran like fire along his veins, and he lay down and longed to die, and cried, Through wine I perish, the bane of all my race. Why should I live forever in this agony? Who will take my immortality that I may die? Then Prometheus answered, the good Titan, whom Heracles had set free from Caucasus, I will take your immortality and live forever, that I may help poor mortal men. So Chiron gave him his immortality, and died, and had rest from pain. And Heracles and Prometheus wept over him, and went to bury him on Pelion. But Zeus took him up among the stars, to live forever, grand and mild, low down in the far southern sky. And in time the heroes died, all but Nestor, the silver-tongued old man and left behind them valiant sons, but not so great as they had been. Yet their fame, too, lives till this day, for they fought at the ten years' siege of Troy, and their stories in the book which we call Homer, and two of the noblest songs on earth, the Iliad, which tells us of the siege of Troy and Achilles' quarrel with the kings, and the Odyssey, which tells the wanderings of Odysseus through many lands for many years, and how Alcinous sent him home at last, safe to Ithaca, his beloved island, and to Penelope, his faithful wife, and Telemachus, his son, and Euphorbus, the noble swineherd, 
and the old dog who licked his hand and died. End of section 23. Recording by Jackie Horn, Laytonsville, Maryland.